Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to take a look at another Cobalt 80 volt product. And as you can probably see behind me, we have the 80 volt mower. Now I've been using this mower over the last year and about once or twice this spring so far. And I've gained some knowledgeable impressions of this product compared to say a gas equivalent. So I wanted to share those insights with you in case you guys are shopping for this Cobalt 80 volt mower or even another battery powered mower. So to just quickly cover which exact Cobalt mile this is. This is the six amp hour battery version, which is the biggest battery they make. It is also the single battery mower. They also make a dual slot version um, after we have bought this mower. So uh, in case you guys are looking for a longer runtime, you might wanna look into the dual slot version, but this is the single slot with the six amp hour battery. I have reliably gotten about 45 minutes of continuous runtime with this mower, and it has done the full lot size of about 0.25 acres on one single charge. Now the battery itself at the end of that usage would be flashing, which means um, going by their capacity chart here would be well under like 20%. So I can only assume that this mower or and battery pack combination can do about a 50 minute runtime and maybe 0.3 acres or so. Um, obviously we do have some terrain and hills here, so that will impact the amount of battery being used. Um, if you have a flat yard, I would say you can definitely squeeze a bit more acreage um, and runtime out of this mower if you are only doing um, you know, a certain speed and it's consistent and it's flat. And again, not using as much battery going up hills and stuff like that. So jumping right into the pros of this mower, obviously because it is battery powered, it is extremely quiet. Now, as you guys just heard from those two clips, you can see from a regular gas powered equivalent that this mower um, is significantly quieter. So in a residential neighborhood or anything like that, you can pretty much use this mower any time of day um, and not disturb many people at all. So um, even using this mower outside of the house, you know, 10 feet away from the house, you can really um, barely hear it in, inside a house. So that is one thing I really enjoy about this mower, um, basically being able to use it anytime you want without disturbing any sort of piece. Now the next pro I'd like to cover is the fact that this mower is extremely lightweight. Now the battery itself is very sizable if you have the six amp hour battery, but still comparing it to a combustion engine, it is still much lighter. So overall, uh, the frame and everything on this mower, even though the build quality is not maybe as sturdy or robust as some of the gas powered equivalents, uh, overall it is very lightweight and easy to move around. Now, the third thing I've really enjoyed about this mower is the height adjustment and range of height adjustability. Now, the height adjustment is controlled by one single lever on the side of the deck, um, and that moves the entire deck up and down. And I believe there's about seven or eight ranges um, of height adjustability with this mower. Now, side benefit to that is that the uh, deck and mower itself has a little bit of suspension travel, if you will, in terms of going over rough terrain. It really doesn't jar the handlebar, say as much as a firmly mounted handlebar on a uh, different gas powered mower that just has firm height adjustments and that is not kind of spring loaded, like I said, with that height adjustment. So this is kind of a pro and a con in a way because it may impact the cut quality a little bit, which I'll talk about a little bit later on my con section. Uh, but overall, if you have really bumpy or rough terrain in your yard, it definitely helps ease the handlebar jarring uh, feeling that you'll feel going over that terrain. Now, another pro I like about this mower is that it will store very compactly by storing vertically. Now, the handlebar will fold down and the mower will sit on two little pegs and the rear wheels upright. So if you need to store it in tight spaces, say garage, shed, even maybe indoors in a back room, it will do that very easily and uh, very compactly. Now, the next thing I like about this mower is it has automatic blade speed control. Now, this is, again, a pro and a con because it has its pros to where, say, you hit a dense patch of grass or going through leaves, um, doing some heavy mulching. It will automatically kick up to a higher blade speed to, again, mulch the grass better and uh, disperse it better in the yard itself. And then once you're through that dense patch of leaves or grass, it will kick down to its lower blade speed, which is normally what it will run at. Now I say this is both a pro and a con because again, this may impact your cut quality. From what I noticed out of the box is that this mower has a, uh, I wouldn't say a dull blade, but something that could use a little sharpening right out of the box. So when you're combining the semi dull blade with a lower blade speed, it overall may not cut as cleanly as say when the mower is running on the high speed. Now I wish there was controls to set which speed you would like the mower to run on, but unfortunately this is all automatically controlled with this model mower. 
And the last pro I'd like to mention with this mower is if, of course, that it is part of the 80 volt cobalt family. Now, you may have seen on my channel over the winter that I posted an 80 volt snowblower review. And uh, make sure you go ahead and check that out if you guys are interested in a cobalt snowblower or battery powered snowblower. But this is part of the 80 volt lineup. So you can use it with chainsaws, snowblowers, um, edgers, trimmers, blowers, just about anything that cobalt sells in terms of a yard appliance, uh, you can use this battery pack with. So jumping right into the cons, the mower has a mulching plug that goes behind where the bagging section is, and that's about the case for just about every mower on the market. Um, but this one I find tends to have heavy, heavy grass built up behind the mulching plug and uh, between the cover and that plug, I guess you could say, to where it literally just compacts it in there and you need to check every single time you mow and clean that out of there because chances are it is completely packed full of grass clippings. Now the next con I have to say is kind of a personal con and that is the height adjustment of the handlebars. Now it has three quick height adjustments that you can set it at. I have it directly in the middle most of the times but I do occasionally put it on the highest height adjustment. Um, and I would like to see maybe four or five height adjustments uh, available on this mower because uh, for me personally, the middle one is maybe a hair too low and the high setting is a little bit too high. So I'm in between, I guess, those two height adjustment settings for the handlebars. And that's just something um, that I would like to see more height adjustment availability with. So going along with that philosophy, we have the speed adjustments. Now the speed adjustments on the handlebars of this mower are very cheap. I have to say some of the cheapest part of this mower itself. It feels chintzy just when you change it. And overall, I have experienced some um, I guess intermittency between the selection of the toggle itself. Uh, but I would like to see more speed adjustments or more consistent um, thresholds in those speed adjustments because usually I typically use the mower on about three out of five in terms of the speed. But I find when I go up to four out of five, the mower seems to be moving too fast. And then five out of five on this mower is just like running speed. So um, that's something I just like to see addressed that um, there's more consistency with the speed adjustments because one out of the five is way too slow. Like your grandma could walk behind it is that slow. And five out of five is like overkill, way too fast. It impacts the cutting quality because you're moving so fast over the, the grass itself. So typically I land in the middle, um, but I would like to see a little more consistency with that speed adjustment. Now going along with the self propulsion, there is a small delay when using the self propulsion button up on the handlebar. So when you press it, there's a little bit of delay until the mower gets up and moving. Not a huge deal, but something I would like to see a little more responsive with. Now going along with the self-propulsion idea, if you want to pull the mower back immediately after releasing the button for uh, forward movement, the wheels on the back of the mower will lock and prevent you from pulling the mower back. Now this happens immediately after releasing that button, like I said, and it is a very annoying thing, especially if you're making a lot of turns in your yard or just need to consistently pull the mower back after uh, doing laps around your yard. This is something that is probably one of my biggest complaints about this mower uh, is the fact that those wheels lock up immediately after releasing the self propulsion button. So the last few items to talk about again is the battery life and the battery life indicator on the mower and the handlebars. Now to start with the indicator on the handlebar and the indicator on the battery pack routinely do not match each other. So when I say this, um, by the time we're done mowing our yard, typically the battery pack is flashing, which means the battery is less than 20%. Now, if you look at the button indicator on the handlebars, it will say the battery life is two out of four bars, which I would assume to be roughly 50%. Now, if you take a look at Cobalt's own graphic here, it'll say one light is 25%, two lights is 50, three lights is 75, and four lights is full. So again, going by my philosophy, um, the two indicators do not match whatsoever. So the handlebars could say you're at 50% and the next thing you know, the battery pack dies because it is you know, below 10% or whatever. So that is one thing I would like to see addressed and uh, could be a lot better. Honestly, that's something that should be pretty simple uh, between the two things, but for some reason it just doesn't work. Now the next thing to go with battery is the runtime. Obviously I touched on that earlier in this video. Um, I would say a quarter of an acre is definitely fair considering the amount of hills and terrain we have in our yard. Uh, but I would like to see a six amp hour battery go a little bit longer in terms of runtime. Now I forget exactly what cobalt quotes this mower can do. And I assume that is under perfect scenario conditions, you know, on the lowest speed or whatever. 
Um, but I do believe we are underneath what Cobalt quotes that this mower can do in terms of acreage and runtime. So I'd like to see that improved, especially with the largest six amp hour battery. Overall, I would say it's not necessarily a con the amount of runtime we go with this mower, but it's not necessarily a pro either. So now I'll touch on a few last topics here while we wrap up this review. Obviously the maintenance with this mower is a huge plus. There's nothing, no oil, no gas to change. Obviously you wanna do store the battery properly over winter months. Uh, so maintenance is a breeze with the battery power mower and something that I have been very happy in using uh, versus the gas counterparts. Now I touched on this a little bit earlier is the cut quality. Um, I've sharpened this blade once and I'm going to do it again here in the spring. Um, but again, I would say you definitely need to keep the blade sharp with this mower to get the best cut quality because of that auto uh, blade speed control. Uh, but overall, I would say if you do that, you're in pretty good shape. And last thing is the mulching capability with this mower. Obviously, the cut quality is decent, and I would say it's adequate for most applications, again, with that sharpened blade. But the mulching quality with this mower, as long as you keep the deck height below, I would say three or four, the mulching capabilities with this mower are pretty good overall. Now, it could be better. But again, I think that has something to do with the automatic blade speed and just the overall design of the deck and blade underneath. Um, but I have no complaints with the mulching capabilities for most applications with leaves and everything like that with this mower. Obviously, it probably doesn't do the best with sticks and small twigs like a gas-powered mower would, just with the more power behind the blade. Um, but mulching, I would say, is very good, and I have been had no complaints whatsoever. Now, in terms of would I recommend this mower to anybody, I would say absolutely. It has been a blast to use. Um, in terms of a gas mower. I'm just glad that you can get rid of the gas and everything like that to do with the gas mowers. Obviously the noise level with this mower is great. Um, the last thing to discuss really is the price point. Now gas mowers over the last few years have crept up in price to where a equivalent gas and battery power mower are probably within 50 to $100 of each other. So in terms of what I recommend, the six amp hour battery version of this mower, I would say yes, if you have any size yard, that's bigger of probably a 10th or 0.15 acres. Um, I definitely think you can use it. And depending on what other tools you might be buying from Cobalt, the larger battery pack definitely is beneficial there. Now I just checked Lowe's website since this is a Lowe's brand and this mower itself is actually on sale this month until early May uh, for $100 off retail and that can be combined with the veterans discount. Now that is how we actually stumbled upon this mower and trying it out is a special sale combined with the 10% veterans discount brought down to about the mid 400 range with tax. So I would say if you can get this mower for that price it is definitely worth checking out, especially if you wanna upgrade your current gas mower or just wanna jump into a battery powered mower for the first time. Um, I would definitely recommend this mower to anybody who's checking out for the mid $400 price range. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions or comments regarding this mower, please leave them down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. If you guys want to support the channel, please check out the two affiliate links in the description for both eBay and Amazon. If you guys just click those links for, before purchasing any items on those websites, I get a very small percentage of the total sale and that's a free way you guys can help support the channel and me making these videos. So here we are on uh, one of the first decent days in a while here in the Midwest. So I'm sure I'll be uh, using this mower here very routinely uh, to mow the yard. But again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.